What's up y'all? If you plan on bow hunting elk this fall, you're not going to want to miss this video. Let's jump on into my elk arrow setup and what I believe is probably one of your best options out there for an all around elk hunting arrow. Let's jump on into it. All right guys, if you wanna see a complete arrow build, I built some arrows for tack. Uh, go check that video out because it's gonna be very similar to the setup that I'm getting ready to tell you about. But without further ado, let's jump on into what I believe is one of the best options out there for an all around elk hunting arrow for uh, guys like myself that really don't wanna spend five hundred four or five hundred dollars just for a dozen arrows to hunt elk with i have got the tried and true easton axis long range match grades yes i get the match grades do i necessarily know that it makes a huge difference i'm not sure if you think it makes a difference between the standards and the match grades comment down below and let me know uh why or let everybody know why you think it's worth the upgrade in price from the three thousandths arrows to the one thousandths match grade arrows one thing to keep in mind with the match grades the match grades come with the um, easton match grade components uh, what i'm shooting this year is uh, a little bit different than what i shot last year and we'll get into that here in a minute i did shoot the easton axis long range uh, last year and i have i really enjoyed this arrow so we'll start out like i said uh for shaft this is the axis long range this is in a 340. uh if you haven't seen my era or my bow build for this year um go check that video out but just for a quick overview i'm shooting a matthews lift 29 and a half at 27 inch draw 76 pounds uh so that's a good reference for what i'm or why i'm shooting what i'm shooting as far as the arrow um, spine goes so like i said i'm shooting a 340 my total arrow length is 25 inches without the knock so from the end of the shaft to the end of the shaft 25 inches it's longer than that once you factor in the, the outsert and the knock um, but when i'm cutting these i'm cutting them flush from the back of the shaft to the front of the shaft so 25 inches um, just to give you a reference this arrow as far as weight wise that's going to be the big one so a lot of you guys are seeing uh, some info out there on why going heavy is better than going light and to the point to a point i think that's true but i think just like anything else there is a, a happy medium there and it really really depends on your setup your draw weight your draw length um, if you can pull 70 or 80 pounds then you have a lot more options if you have a 29 plus inch draw you have more options but for a good all around elk arrow grain weight i would prefer something in that like 420 to maybe um, 500 that's going to be a good window that's going to pretty much cover everybody um, now like i said there's a lot of info out there showing that you should shoot a 600 grain arrow for elk or that you should shoot a 500 plus grain arrow at a minimum for elk i don't necessarily think that's true um, my biggest thing for my setup is i like to shoot an arrow especially going out west guys you may have some longer shots i like to shoot an arrow that is going to allow me to get the speed that i want out of my bow so what is that speed for me um, i like to be in that 280 plus so anywhere from 280 to 300 is my goal um, 
I'm generally speaking more towards that 280. This year's setup, I'm currently shooting 290 feet a second. This is like the best setup speed wise that I've shot in a long time. So I have shot some bows faster, I have shot some bows slower. My last setup was roughly that 267 um, speed wise with this arrow, arrow setup. And I'm glad that this year's bow is shooting a lot faster. And I can definitely tell a difference shooting at distance. And I'll kind of get into that here in a minute. So for grain weight, this arrow weighs 430 grains. Now, a lot of you guys are going to say, well, that's way too light for elk. And if you think that, comment down below and let us know, let everybody know where they can read these comments and see where's your justification for why 430 grains is not heavy enough for elk. I would really like to see somebody prove to me why that's not a good enough arrow setup because I have an elk on the wall that I shot uh, with this arrow right here um, back in 2020. This is an Eastern Axis five millimeter match grade, 340 spine. I was shooting roughly 76 pounds, shooting about that 270 mark or so on speed. This arrow was about 460 grains, I believe, maybe a little bit, 465, something like that. Um, and I was shooting a 100 grain Q80 Exodus sweat blade with a 50 grain brass insert. Um, this arrow went front on that elk, penetrated directly through the body cavity all the way back to the pelvic area. The bull went like 15 yards and piled over dead. So like I say, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but you don't have to shoot a 600 grain arrow to be able to cleanly kill elk, even out to distance. Now, like I said, 430 grains is a sweet spot for me. If you're somebody with a longer draw length, keep in mind that your arrows can weigh a little bit more and still maintain that 280 to 300. The reason why that number is so critical to me is around that 280 mark, broadheads will still tune up to about 300 feet a second. They seem to tune pretty easy, but yet you can maintain a decent pin gap even out to distance. So for this current setup, at that 430 grain mark. I shot the other day at 58 yards. I left my pin set on 50. I put the pin on top of a deer's back at 58 yards, my target, deer target, at 58 yards, and it was a heart shot. All three shots that I shot were heart shots, just putting the top of my pin on top of that deer's back. Now, that's an extreme case. Generally speaking, if I have the option, I'm gonna dial my sight. I shoot a three pin vertical. Um, I'm going to try to dial my sight in that situation, but if I can't, I want an arrow that allows me a little bit of leeway on gaps. Um, I like to maintain as small of a gap as I can, but also allowing my pins to have enough gap where the pins don't blur together. So 280 to 300 is, like, is where I like to sit. So on the back end here, I've got a wrap. This is a whitewater archery um, wrap. This is a five inch by 0.85 um, size wrap. If you're a guy that's gonna shoot a four millimeter shaft or a girl that's gonna shoot a four millimeter shaft, definitely check out their 0.85 um, width wraps from Whitewater. I love these guys. I met these guys at the ATA show. That's a small company. I like to support small when I can. And I've continued to buy their wrap. I've bought their wraps for several years now and had really good luck with them. Uh, I've got an IP4 knock. I don't really like the knocks that come with these. That's really one of the only things that I don't like component wise. And the reason I don't really like those is just my personal setup. Those, the knocks that come with these from Easton are way too tight on my string. So it may not be that way for all of you, but it is for me. So I've got the IP4 knocks in here. Uh, I really like these knocks. They're strong, they're short, and uh, they're just, they're really well made. So. That's what I'm shooting on a knock. Fletch wise, I haven't jumped on the four fletch bandwagon. That elk, the one that I shot my elk with was a four fletch, um, but that's really about the only year that I shot the four fletch. And I don't think my bow was tuned very well with the broadheads. And the only reason I think that is because I actually had to shoot a four fletch to get that thing to tune at long, long distances, like 80 plus yards. But since that time, I have went away from the Blazers and I have went to the AE Max Stealth. 
I love these fletchings. I've had extremely good results with these. They steer a broadhead well. They do really good in the wind and they're durable. They don't stay bent. If you shoot through your target, they don't, it doesn't mess them up. Um, and as long as you use a primer pin, there's no issues with them sticking to your air shaft. So I'm shooting a three fletch A Max Stealth with a uh, right helical, a hard helical. I'm using the uh, Arizona Easy Fletch uh, Mini Max uh, fletching jig, and that puts a really stiff helical on these things, but they, like I said, they steer a broadhead really well. On the front, this is gonna be pretty controversial because the big hype right now with four millimeters especially is to not shoot aluminum outserts or inserts because they bend. And I will say this, aluminum does bend, but with these new match grade outserts, one thing about it is if you choose to go to the titaniums, you're, you might as well add another hundred bucks to a set of dozen arrows. If you have the money, by all means, check out Podium Archery and get their titanium outserts. They are built similar to the match grade components from Easton. One thing I will say, I started shooting these in the spring, these aluminums, and while it does bend if you hit something hard, now I'm talking about like the steel post that goes through the center of your leg and your deer target, um, it will bend if you hit that, but it's actually been saving my air shafts because last year I shot the Easton um, titanium uh, half outs. And what I did is those titaniums, the way they were impacting, they weren't bending, but they were actually busting out the side of my air shaft. So if I hit something hard, you might as well hang it up. You might as well throw this air shaft away. Now, with these match grades, I have bent a few of them, but I've saved my air shafts. I have yet to bust an air shaft since I went back to shooting aluminum half outs. And as far as an elk goes, at least for my experience, if you shoot an elk in the center of that leg bone, center of that shoulder bone where all that comes together, I don't care if you're shooting titaniums, I don't care what you're shooting, the odds are you're not gonna get very good penetration and there's a really good chance that that elk is not gonna die or you're at the very least, you're not gonna find that animal. And the biggest thing for me, guys, is if you're training and you're putting your money into your bow um, to make that 99.9% .9 positive shot of not hitting that shoulder, you really don't need to be building your arrows to try to shoot an elk in the shoulder. And it's not that people are trying to hit an elk in the shoulder, I just think they're putting a little bit too much emphasis on oh my gosh, you know, I gotta have an arrow that can punch through an elk shoulder just in case I do hit it. I think if you put your money towards your bow and not towards a $500 set a dozen arrows, you'll be much better off. If you put your money and your attention towards being as accurate as possible, shooting as accurately as possible, I think you are in much better shape. Along with that, like I said, with the really heavy era setups, guys, you got to pay attention to your bow tune. Extremely, pay, I mean, it's extremely critical. You've got to pay attention to your pin gaps. If you're off by a couple yards with a 600 grain arrow, it's not good, guys. You're gonna miss by a lot. With this arrow setup, it's much more forgiving out to that 50, 60, 70 yard mark. It's much more forgiving than a extremely heavy arrow would be. One of the most important, if not the most important thing about a good elk arrow is shooting a sharp cut on contact broadhead. In my opinion, you're much better suited to hunt elk with a fixed blade. There are tons of tests out there, tons of tests on YouTube showing how great these little broadheads are. Now, one thing I have changed since I shot my elk is I'm shooting a 125 grain broadhead. The reason why I went to a 125 over a 100 for one is gives me 25 extra grains as far out on the end of my arrow shaft as I can get, which helps me with my front of center. If you're a guy that watches front or center or think that's a huge thing, uh, that will help you with your front of center. The farther out the weight is on your arrow shaft towards the end, the farther or the more that will exponentially help your FOC. Another thing with a 125 over a 100 is generally speaking that extra 25 grains is built into the ferrule so your ferrule's a little bit thicker and heavier duty. I haven't jumped on the single bevel, double bevel, single or two blade um, broadhead bandwagon yet. Um, I'm not saying that I won't ever, um, but I love a three blade. The blood trail is much better in my opinion. 
And this little Q80 Exodus and all the testing that's done on YouTube, this thing has consistently scored at the very top, if not the top three in almost every category. Look at Lusk, Outdoor Adventures. He has plenty of testing on these broadheads. Um, Born and Raised Outdoors did one recently that they had this, this broadhead tested in and it perform outperformed much more expensive broadheads in its class. Uh, and I just love this broadhead. Like I said, I shoot the sweat blade as long as it's legal in the state that you hunt in. I would recommend the sweat blade over the full. Uh, it's a little bit quieter um, and they seem to do uh, better in the wind. Uh, I have shot the full uh, in the wind and done okay. Um, I just prefer the sweeps. Uh, and in my opinion, it's hard to go wrong with that little broadhead. For like 50 bucks for three broadheads or 45 bucks for three broadheads, it's so hard to beat. One thing that I've started doing in the last couple of years is I've noticed, I noticed several years back that over the course of a season, if I've got four, five, six arrows in my quiver, I leave my quiver on my bow all season, I've noticed that my broadheads can sometimes come loose. Now, I've never heard anybody else say that they do this, but what I started doing is I started taking some cold melt or hot melt, do not use super glue. I'll take cold melt or hot melt, I'll just heat it up slightly, dab my threads and my broadhead in that, cold, in that um, hot melt or cold melt. And I'll actually, while it's still liquid, I'll thread it into my half out or my insert, whatever you're using. I'll thread that in while it's hot, get it snugged up. I go ahead and make sure that my fletchings line up with the blades of my broadhead. That's just something that I've had the best luck doing in a hunting setup. It seems like the broadheads seem to plane a little bit less and they seem to steer better in the wind if your broadhead matches your fletchings. So um, I'll take that hot melt, run it in there while it's wet, get everything snugged up. And when that cools, I haven't had an issue with my broadheads being loose in my quiver at all in like the last three seasons. So that's just kind of a pro tip there. So lastly, I finally got my office set up the way I want it. And one thing I'm gonna start doing in my videos, I'm gonna share you a Bible verse at the end of each one of my videos. So along with that, let me bring you what I thought was pretty cool for a, a series involving arrows. And this is coming from Isaiah 49. So this is Isaiah 49, one through three. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from, afar, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp, a sharp sword, in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft, in his quiver hath he hid me. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. I thought that was a pretty cool verse since we're talking about arrows in this series. Uh, so hopefully you get something out of that. Something that I wanna start doing in all my videos, figured today would be a good day to start that. So like I say guys, this is my elk arrow setup. Hopefully this video serves you well. Hopefully you've learned something from it and you've got a good idea of the setup that you wanna use this fall. Good luck out there. If you need any of these components, uh, give the guys up at Grafton a call. 704-855-1300. Be on the lookout for their website. It should be opening up here pretty soon where you can get most of this stuff online on their website. So appreciate you watching guys. Like I always say, please like and subscribe, comment down below. It really helps the channel. Remember to live your life to the fullest. Use your passions to bless others and good luck out there in the Elk Woods this fall.